Sample dropping the damn ball. The <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's bring in the man who covered the game for uh, obviously for Jacob uh, uh, Sports, <coughs> and he we he joins us every week, and he's live uh, from uh, Inc- Lincoln Financial Field. And let's bring him in, John McMullen. Now, John, listen, it's the it's the same exact script. They dominate yeah. the team. They they get up early. They kind of like you know allow some yardage, and when they need a play to put it away, bang, they get to play. I, I don't know what else to say anymore of this team. But they're sick yeah, I know. Out, it's, they, they it's, getting it's getting boring. It's getting boring. This team's really, really good. And it's getting tough to come up with stuff to complain about. So I got to default to set there. I can't complain about much with this team at this point. They, they you know, Jalen Hurts, A.J. Brown. A.J. Brown comes up to the podium after the game. First thing he talks about is the plays he didn't make. Because he had a big drop, he got caught from behind. Uh, he's the best receiver this team has had in a really, really long time. Uh, he dominates Jalen Hurts. You know, there were some people who complained that Jalen Hurts wasn't throwing passing touchdowns. Well, now now you got the passing touchdown. So I guess some people say, "Hey, where's the running game? Where's the running aspect to it?" Look, this team is just tough to deal with right now. And the the one thing we can probably all agree on, special teams continues every week. Another fake punt. Um, other than that, I mean, look, I said on the pregame show, this game was one where I didn't even consider Pittsburgh winning. Uh, that's how much of a difference I saw between these two teams. And that's how it shook out. They dominated this football game. Hey, hey, John, I don't even care about the X's and O's right now, you know, because it's the same theme over and over. Here's what, because I don't think you, you didn't have a chance to hear this. Our diamond debate was Jason Kelsey wearing the Batman mask on the sideline. Mike missing it. Yeah, see, you, you knew I was going to bring, gonna bring up. that up with the second yeah, question. Yes, because you know what? <laughs> we, can talk, we got plenty of time to talk football. <laughs> Mike, Mike's, Mike's take on it is it was disrespectful to Mike Tomlin and the Steelers organization. My take on it was, you know what? He did it on the sideline. He wasn't out in the middle of the field doing it. It's Halloween weekend, as Seth said. Did you Number two questions in one. Did you have a problem with Kelsey wearing the mask on the sideline, especially when all the starters were pulled out of the game? And number two, no. was there any scuttlebutt afterwards in terms of did, did, did Kelsey say anything about it? Because we we thought Stoutland told him to take it off. What's your take on this? Uh, I thought Lane Johnson showing up as Kelsey was the bigger deal. I thought that was tremendous. I don't know if you saw Lane before the game. No. But he showed up in costume as Jason Kelsey. So he had the Ocean Drive T-shirt. He had the hair. He had the wig on. So that, to me, was tremendous. I don't know. This whole Batman thing, you, you, you know, A.J., uh, Devontae Quez Watkins came out as one pregame when they were introducing the offense. Look, I would say the teams who get blown out in any venue, uh, whether it's the NFL, baseball, football, basketball, whatever you want to go to, if you want to stop the celebration, don't get blown out. There and you that, go. That, 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 I, I, I don't have a problem with it. Hey, John, um, by the way, um, I resemble that comment. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I resemble that comment about complaint. Um, okay, so let's go back. You know, the year that the Eagles won the Super Bowl, it was the underdog theme, and you could wear the mask, and no one complained about the underdog mask. What the hell is Mike, Mike, Mike Miss complaining about this damn Batman mask for? Yeah, Please tell you. me. I don't know. But you know what I hate about the under, uh, underdog thing? It was boldly. We all knew they were a good team. They only were underdogs because so Carson Wentz got hurt. If Carson Wentz doesn't get hurt, people like to have, there's a lot of revisionist history. The Eagles are significant favorites over Atlanta in the playoffs, significant favorites over Minnesota in the championship game. And then, yeah, they're probably underdogs against New England in the Super Bowl. But everybody knew they had a really good team. And guess what? The Eagles thought their season was over when Carson Wentz went down in Los Angeles. It was like a week in the Novacare complex the day uh, the day after that injury. So that whole underdog thing was a bunch of you-know-what. But I, I said this to Doug Peterson. 
I, it, it, you know, if it works, use it. I mean, it works, well, and, and they that's, bought that's, into that, it. You're, you're, you're put, going right into my point. If it works to bond the team, use it. This was this have, and I don't want to make yeah. a big deal. This this was just a little side debate we had, and all of a sudden, <laughs> this is the state of the Eagles. They're so good. We're talking about the friggin' Batman yeah, mask we're talking for, exactly, con, for content. Exactly. Really, uh, what, what, what yeah. I'm saying here is, in a game like that where you've blown that team out, you already got your second team on, and I see Tomlin across. It's Thompson, Tomlin's been dealt a, a bad hand right now. They're in a yeah. rebuilding oh, yeah. mode, and, and so I don't know if, if wearing the mask at that particular point, and I'm not anti-fun. I just made a comment that you are I, no think, I think Stoutland looked at it, said something to him, and he took it off. I think Stoutland had the same view that I had of it. John, he's well, the pitcher. Yeah. You know, he, he's he's the pitcher of political correctness. That's what that is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Stout probably <laughs> told him to take it off. I believe that. I mean, Stout certainly is a no nonsense guy, so he doesn't want to deal with any of that. But um, yeah, I don't have a problem. I mean, we all know Jason Kelsey. I mean, he might. I I think they might give him this city when he retires. I mean, he he is the most popular. Uh, person in the city right now. He's all fillied up after the game at the locker room. By the way, if you want to talk about ancillary stuff, can we stop the pandering? I say this all the time. Stop the pandering. With, with everybody, Nick Sirianni's got to say, go Phillies and this and that. No, you don't. Just worry about your own team. They, they're fine. They're in the World Series. Everybody's got to pander. That's my opinion. Hey, hey, John. All right, let, let's get back to something more pressing. Second question, you D-Gun, you go with the mask. <laughs> exactly. All right, now let's talk some football right, here. Got Your thoughts on the way uh, Jalen Hurst was dropping dimes today. Um, I mean, he threw three beautiful beautiful balls. Obviously, the first touchdown, Minka Fitzpatrick misplayed that one. But the other two touchdowns were a thing of beauty, and we keep becoming more and more impressed with Jalen Hurts each and every week in terms of delivery and accuracy. Yeah, I mean, he, the two of the three touchdowns, the first touchdown, I actually didn't think it was a good throw. He threw it in double coverage, and Mika Fitzpatrick was right there, did a terrible right. job right. going for that football. That was sort of an A.J. Brown, I'm just getting this football-type touchdown. The other two were just dropped in the bucket. They were perfect uh, throws to A.J., AJ put up the late hand, so to speak, that Randy Moss, which is famous for um, just great plays. And it was interesting. First couple of throws, I said, oh, Jalen doesn't look accurate today. And then all of a sudden he heats up. He's got this ability to, you know, forget the last play. It's a cliche in sports. If you strike out, you miss a shot in, in, in the NBA, you know, forget about it, move forward. Jalen Hurts has got that ability. So he might have a bad couple passes. He might have a bad quarter. But he's going to keep coming after you. And, yeah, I mean, he's second in the MVP race right now in most of the betting markets behind Josh Allen. People say, how could he be there where when he doesn't throw passing touchdowns? Well, here's your game. Eagles seem to do it a different way every week. Today it was the passing game. Four touchdowns of over 27 yards. Mm -hmm. I mean, those are deep shots. Um, tremendous, tremendous passing game by Jalen Hurts. John, I'm going to stay right here because, um, you know, I think for the first time this year, the Eagles actually threw the football more than they actually ran the football. What does that say about the evolution of not only Jalen Hurts but the evolution of this offense that you can get to a point where no one thought we could ever be? Last year we had to most certainly throw, run the ball a hell of a lot more than we actually threw it. This year I said all along that the Eagles are going to have to get Jalen Hurts to throw the ball on average 30 to 35 times a game in order for them to find out whether he can be the guy. I think he's answered those questions at this point in time. But for today, 30 passes, 20 runs. Um, Hertz only took off and ran twice. Um, yeah. What does it say about the evolution of this offense that they can move to that point where they can become a more pass-dominant team than they are a run-dominant team? Yeah, I think, I think it's about, and this is what I like about the coaching staff, Seth, um, and they've proven this as well, 
they go into each game and they look at the opponent and say, all right, they can't do this. And that's the beauty of this Eagles offense. If they got to run it, they run it. If they got to throw it, they throw it. Today they saw a Pittsburgh team that's really struggling on the back end, and they said, we could take advantage of this. They wanted to get Dallas Goddard involved early. Dallas had a heck of a game, by the way. He was always open. And when he wasn't open, the Steelers were paying so much. He was the guy they were paying attention to when Zach Pascal got wide open for that touchdown. Um, they were trying to get Devontae Smith involved. Uh, didn't work as well, but obviously A.J. had the huge game. Um, you know, if they loaded uh, 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 um, if, if they rushed three and they dropped eight in coverage and said, you know what, you guys are gashing us too much, they would have ran the ball. And they started to run the ball in the second half. They only had 23 yards rushing, something like that, yep. in the first half. Yep. And then all of a sudden you see Miles Sanders get some big holes in the second half. That's the beauty of this offense. And it morphs from, from week to week. And that's that's a big deal. Uh, so, listen, we're looking ahead because it's the only thing we can do at this point. And it certainly looks like there's a clear path to 10-0, and 0, which is, like, amazing. Um, t- tell me what you see looking to, to the McMullen crystal ball as they, they play the, the opponents that they're going to be playing in the next three weeks. And then after that, it gets a little tougher. But is 10-0 and 0 inevitable here? Yeah, I'm just looking at something real quick. Sorry, Mike. Uh, Jordan Davis has a high ankle strain, so it looks like he's going to be out for a little bit. That's generally a four-week injury. So um, that uh, could be a concern. Obviously, you're on a short week. You don't expect him back. But as far as this team as a whole, yeah, I mean, they don't like to look ahead. They constantly talk about winning the day, never mind the week. But, yeah, if you look at the schedule and you see Houston – and you see Washington, and you see Indianapolis, and Taylor Heineke starting, although Washington might be better with Taylor Heineke, to be honest. Uh, Sam Ellinger, it's tough to not say, all right, 10 and 0 is going to look pretty good, and that's, that's the kind of team this is. Now, the one thing, and we just talked about it, that can change anybody's year is, it, is injuries, and that's a big one. Now, there's bigger ones you could suffer, but at some point, you're going to have some adversity, and maybe this is some adversity because the Eagles don't have a backup for Jordan Davis. So all of a sudden, these five, one, I shouldn't say they, they have a backup. They don't have a good backup for Jordan Davis. So all these five, one and five, two fronts they like to run are not going to be as effective without Jordan Davis. Hey, John, Any update on that? Yeah. Yeah, four to six, four to six weeks is usually a high ankle sprain. So uh, um, that's that's kind of what you're going to be talking about. Um, now, and he'll have an MRI tomorrow to confirm it, but Eagles are thinking high ankle sprain. Hey, John, can you, can you pinpoint why Boston Scott is the forgotten entity in, in this offense? Um, whenever he gets in there, he produces. Um, he has a burst. He's a tough between the tackle runner. I think he's the best blocking back they have. But yet, for some reason, he he can't get any notoriety or recognition in this offense. I mean, what do you think it is? I mean, obviously they have a commitment to gain well, but but Boston Scott, I think, is a proven commodity and proves that he's a sure-handed, tough, hard-nosed back and should be given more of a look. Yeah, I, I, I think it's about, um, if you look at Nick's history, really even before he came to Philadelphia um, as a coordinator, um, he was in offenses that used two backs in sort of a rotation, and he prefers that mode. So when Miles is, is the lead back, and Kenny's the third down back and the, the hurry up back and the, um, that type of role, you know, Boston Scott doesn't have as big a role. If Miles got injured and he has over the past two seasons and he has an ankle sprain or something like that, wasn't, wouldn't be able to play, I think Boston Scott would take over the lead back role and you would see it. But it was interesting. I, I, I heard you guys talking about the trade deadline. 
Yeah, that seems to be a position where Howie thinks they need more than maybe Nick Sirianni. And I, I do think Nick Sirianni likes Boston Scott. Howie thinks they need to get a little bit better, and we'll see if he can pull anything out. Now, the, the conversations about sending a first-round pick to New Orleans are laughable. That's not going to happen for Alvin Kamara. And they don't have those mid-round picks. Remember, they've already gotten rid of them. So are they going to give up a third-round pick? Yeah, they do that for Kamara. Saints wouldn't. Um, would they do it for Hunt? They probably feel more um, comfortable with a conditional fourth, but they don't have a fourth unless they want to convince Cleveland to wait to 2024, and that's very, very difficult to do. John, uh, great stuff. We appreciate it, and I know you saw that same graphic on TV that we did. Two quarterbacks in Eagle history have started the season 9-0, and right? You know who they are. Yeah. McNabb. Uh, by the way, Jeff, yeah, Jeff uh, set the franchise record today because dating back to last season, uh, he's won okay. 10 consecutive games. So uh, nobody has ever done that in Eagles history. Now, they did play the playoff game, and that should count as well. But 10 consecutive regular season wins for Pretty Jalen Hurts. Nobody amazing. in Eagles history has ever done that. That's before. amazing. And we have to go back to the Dutchman. See, I wanted to get the Dutchman in. Norman Van Brocklin, 1960. <laughs> <laughs> Nine straight. John, always a pleasure. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Oh, All right, that's John McBall. Plenty to go on the show. We're going to give out game balls. We have uh, 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 Devin Caney coming back with us for the drive of the game. Um, we have Phil's tickets. We're going to tell you how to win. That's right. Stay with the show. We're going to tell you how you can actually win the hottest ticket in America right now. It is the Pondla Hockey Eagles postgame show. Missinelli, Gunner. Seth Joyner, back after this.